Welcome to part four of Mega Man X2, and so we've reached a mini boss, a holographic sword weapon. Now, when I think holograms, I think back to that great battle we had with Dr. Wily in Mega Man 2. And what was Wily's only weakness? The bubbles. So, go figure, the bubbles are actually the weakness for this sword. You just have to hit the blue handle with the bubbles, and boom, it's pretty easy. This place is also littered with, with uh, spotlights. My best advice is like, when you go down the first drop, hang to the right. When you go for the left drop, hang to the left. Or the second drop. If you should not hit the spotlights, these blocks will fall a lot slower, as will the scoping radar in the background. There's actually a radar thing that's trying to lock onto you, and should it lock onto you, this mini boss that we're fighting right now would actually have bigger health and more moves to pull off. And uh, that's not good. But luckily, we didn't get locked on, so this is the weakest form of the mini boss. He would also change his color, too. He would go from like green to blue to red, I believe. And uh, it wasn't pleasant. It wasn't pleasant at all. Nevertheless, uh, in this early stage form, he just pretty much shoots and jumps, and uh, it's pretty easy to fight. I will get hit occasionally, but that's only because I'm drunk. Well, not really, but I was tired. Does that count? <laughs> Whatever, mini boss is over and done with. Doesn't really matter. After this last hallway, the alarms go off automatically. There's nothing you can really do about it. The blocks and stuff will drop, so uh, don't stand on them too long. Try and dodge them. And other than that, we've made it to Magna Centipede. Magna Centipede is not a maverick you should take on first, mainly because he has this tail, and if his tail grabs you, he actually takes away more and more of your ability. He'll actually take away your ability to charge your shot, he'll make your jumping uh, lower, he'll make you slower, he'll make you heavier. The more he grabs you, the more impossible the fight will get, and it's just a pain in the ass. However, the Silk Shot instantly destroys his tail, so he's stuck to teleporting along the room trying to hit you. Now, as always, the Silk Shot destroys into four corners. So what I do is, if he's on the ground, I'll shoot in the direction he's in so the block will hit him. But if he's on the ceiling, I'll shoot in the opposite direction so that the corner will actually hit him. And uh, that's all you really have to do. It's a pretty simple Maverick if you have his weakness. If you don't have his weakness, when you if that tail grabs you, shake your damn control pad like you've never shaken it before, because if he... If he takes away your power, the fight is going to be so much harder, and I don't care for it. But with his weakness, he is a pushover. Just to anticipate where he's going, shoot the block where you think it should be shot, and boom. Magnus Centipede is dead as dinner. Not a very challenging boss. At least, not with, if you have his weakness, he isn't. <laughs> well, I guess they all are, except fucking Wheel Gator. Fucking hate Wheel Gator. Ugh! I'm over it. I'm over it. I just hate Wheel Gator. I just hate the fact that I have to fight him again in the boss rush that's sure to come. Nevertheless, we get Magnet Mine. Magnet Mine is basically an explosive, and, uh... I don't recall if it hits a wall and sticks to it, then explodes, or if it explodes automatically upon hitting the wall. But regardless, it's an explosive type weapon, and it's great for taking out this new Maverick that we're fighting right now. And he is... Crystal Snail. You can tell I don't know many of these Mavericks by name. I mean, I, I played X2 uh, quite a bit, but, you know, I don't, I don't know the Mavericks by heart. I can name all of the man robots in the classic Mega Man series, because those are simple names. You know, Snake Man, T Toad Man, easy. I can memorize that stuff, no problem. By the way, this is a heart tank up here. You want to keep tapping the A button and jump out right at the last minute to grab the heart tank. Uh, I know some people like to bring up the uh, sponge wire weapon to grab the wall should they miss the jump. And that's always a good idea. That's why I equipped sponge wire as I was in the mech. And you just want to keep doing that. He has hover boots, this mech, so you can actually hover for a little bit as you jump. If you push the A button, he hovers. And, uh, you know, that's always swell. These green crystals will crush you, and you do not want that. But uh, they don't fall in the hole, surprisingly. You'd think they'd fall in the hole, but no, they don't. They just pass right over it. So you want to hide in the holes to get away from the giant green crystals. There's a lot of 
giant green crystals you want to touch in this level, so uh, look forward to that. And now we come to a mini boss. This game loves its mini bosses. This one is really weak against Wheel Gator's weapon, and it's perfect here because there's a little damn mini robot that's shooting lasers at you, and it's pretty hard to concentrate on firing at the enemy and dodging those lasers. So luckily, the Wheel Gator weapon just attacks them automatically. It does its job, and uh, you don't have to worry about fighting the damn thing too much. All you have to do is worry about dodging the lasers, which is always good. And if you go down here... I forgot. There I go. If you go down here is a new Dr. Light capsule. It's also the Dr. Light upgrade that will show us where the previous upgrade we got was. Mega Man X, enter the capsule. This enhancement will modify your radar optics. It uses some energy, and with it, you will be able to see objects that you could not before. Good luck, Mega Man! Yeah, so basically, if you use it, it might just lock in on a, on a hidden area that you didn't think to look. I never use it. <laughs> I use guides to find all the uh, upgrades and stuff because, you know, I don't want to scrounge every corner of every room looking with the scope. And it runs out of energy, too, so you can't really do that. I mean, you can always farm for weapon energy, but regardless. It's just a, a tad annoying, you know? So it will lock on on a hidden area that you should probably look out for like where the Dr. Light capsule in Moth, in Morph Moth stage was, but, you know, I don't care for it. I do not care for it at all. It's just a... It's not an upgrade that helps me in the castle in the long run, so fuck it. I don't care for it. The green crystals only move when you get close to them, hence why I had to go right close to it. And that's about it. I feel like I was saying something earlier, but I don't know what. Now yeah, regardless, this level, uh, another, this is another Maverick that really is, it helps to have his special weakness before you fight him. Oh, does it help. Mainly because he has a giant shield that is protecting his body, and, uh, he loves to roll around, and, you know, when he's rolling around, you can't really damage him, can you? Luckily, with the bomb we got, the magnet bomb, we can, uh, just get him out of his shield. So Crystal Snail loves to fly around, and he loves to slow down time. When he slows down time, you're going to be moving at half the speed, but you still have a good enough reaction rate that you can still attack him, in my opinion. When you hit him at the mine, he flies out. His invulnerability period will end pretty damn quick, so you can actually shoot him before he reaches you, because he always r flies towards you when he gets hit. So that is something I would recommend, and if you're good enough, you can hit him before he... Like, he turns around right before he goes into his shield, and then slows time. So if you can actually hit him before he goes into his shield, he always turns around, and if you can do it that time, like I am, you can make this fight rather easy and uh, enjoyable. And that's it for Crystal Snail. If you don't have his weakness, he's going to be bouncing around the room, always shielded, and it's going to be hard to fight him. He's slow, but fucking tough. Oh yeah. So we defeated Crystal Snail. We got a nice light blue paint job, and we got this little Crystal Hunter weapon. The Crystal Hunter weapon will actually freeze enemies and encase them in some kind of glass shield, and you can then climb on them to to reach certain ledges. It's gonna be good for a certain uh, heart tank later, and it's also gonna be good for a certain uh, light upgrade that in the X-Hunter castle. But uh, I'm getting ahead of myself now. This is Overdrive Ostrich. Overdrive Ostrich has my favorite theme in the whole game. I love the music of this place. And it also introduces uh, a special little vehicle that we have yet to see in the Mega Man X series so far. And it's pretty fun, if you can get the hang of it. <laughs> I, I still haven't gotten the hang of it, but it's still fun when you do. So let's get into it. It's a hover bike! It can go over spikes, it can shoot... It, well, you have to shoot it, you have to keep crashing the shoot button to blow things open. And you have to actually shoot down bridges and go up them to do any progress. It can also dash, and by dashing off of ramps you can fly a lot higher than you normally would. And you need the bike to reach a certain heart tank. And sometimes I can do it, sometimes I can't. See you in part 5.